All right, so as you can see, I'm in my new new apartment. I've become a more stable man now. So you'll see this scene. That's my bed right over there. But you don't really need to know that. So what are we going to talk about today? There's a lot of action going on, man. There's a lot of action. And it's like nonstop action. I can't even do my normal work right now because of all the action that is going on. So let's first start that in the past day, there has been allegations that Trump is an octopus. He gropes. One of the allegations was by a woman. This happened over 30 years ago. And this woman now looks like Trump's grandma. And to see her when she looks old and her hair is short and next to Trump's current wife doesn't make a lot of sense. I think a lot of people, their gut instinct is to say, you know what, that doesn't look like a woman that Trump would break the law to grope. So that's what we have. There's a lot of women now just basically any woman who has ever met Trump can now come out and say, Trump did this to me. And the New York Times, CNN, Washington Post, any outlet out there, they will take that allegation, not fact check it, not investigate, and just print whatever the women say. That's where we're at right now. That's where the media is at. And I wonder if you know any other man out there who has had his name tarnished just by, I mean, whatever anyone says, because we have to believe. We have to believe what the women say. And this is the culture that we have actually gotten towards. Because if you've been following what rape culture does, it trains people or tries to train people using their PSYOPs or MK Ultra or whatever the hell they're running on us to believe anything a woman says. So now they're using it against Trump. Now, uh, the, what, what the goal of this, what you, what you have to understand, the goal of this is to demoralize people who support Trump to keep them at home on November 8th. So they want you to be just unsure enough about Trump so you don't vote for, for him. And I'm, I'm even getting a lot of messages from men that are saying, you know, what do you think about this? Are you sure? I mean, it's even though we know that the media lies and their lies have been constant, there's still that doubt. There's still that anxiety that, you know, is this it? Is this going to sink him? What should I think about this and what should I feel about it? And I'm going to give you an example. One of a female relative of mine, she sent me a message asking about these new these new allegations. And she asked me, are these true? And I said, no, it's fake. The media has been lying. They lied about me. Don't you, re don't you remember how they lied about me? And even though she, she knows this, she still had to be consoled. She still had to be walked through it. She needed, it's not just the facts that she, she needs. She needs the assurance the emotional assurance that these allegations are false, that Trump is not a serial groper. So what I think Trump has to do is talk to the woman, the women, like a husband talks to a wife. I mean, even though you can provide evidence to your wife that you didn't cheat, you have the, the bill or the phone proof that I didn't cheat on you. And you can show this to her, but she still needs the emotional assurance. You have to walk her through it. You have to say, honey, look, there is no reason I would cheat on you because I love you and your body is still tight and there's no other woman on the street that could compare that could compare to you. And that's what Trump has to give to women right now, which he's not... He's not doing it. Yeah, you can say these allegations are false and it's it's wrong, but you still need to walk women through it. You need to give them the emotional assurance that, hey, baby, these allegations are false. I would never cheat on you, honey. That's what he needs to really do. And I think for, for Trump, the best thing he can do is try to get a woman to actually speak to other women and say these things. So maybe he can get his daughter, Ivanka, to really come out there and say, my father is a good man. He would never do these things because this, this, and, and, and this. Give the reasons that women need. Because 
right now, if you're a man, you are on on board. I mean, Trump can right now come out with a heinous crime, and that's probably not going to change. Like, Trump can do something really bad, turns out, like he mugged a homeless man, I'm probably still going to vote for him. But women, it's not enough. They really need that guidance. So I think Trump is not doing that. He's, you know, when you see him at a rally and he's speaking really firmly, he's not talking, he's talking to men. You know, he's talking to men. He's saying that the media is lying and, and so on. And this is an important moment in the history of the United States. Yeah, that talks to men. But to women, that's just, it's going right over their own, own heads because they need that emotional assurance. So if, if Trump is watching this right now, which I doubt he is, we got to, or someone in his campaign, you got to talk to the women. The women are not sure what to believe. They don't trust the media completely, but they don't have any alternate. They don't know what to believe. You need to calm their nerves. You need to assure them in an emotional way. If my own family relative is coming to me unsure, and she already knows I'm on the Trump Trump train, she already knows that the media is full of lies. If she's coming to me not sure, and if she's coming to me needing emotional assurance, that just says that Trump has to do a better job. Okay, the the next thing that he has to do is really do keep on inoculating everyone against what the media is putting out. Because Trump in the past has focused on saying that the CNN lies, that the New York Times lies. I know he kicked out the Washington Post, but he needs to get people used to the fact that everyone is lying. Everyone in the media is lying so that if we have another bombshell story come out in the next week or so, and I'm sure it's coming, people have this instinct to say, oh, wait, Trump told me that the media is going to lie about everything. And he showed me that the media has lied. So why would I believe the media now? So he basically has to run psyops on everyone whenever he's at a rally or on his Twitter feed, and he can be doing more Facebook live feeds or Periscopes. I'm not sure why he's not doing that because he can reach a larger audience. But he needs to basically say the media is lying about everything. Don't trust what they say so that when the next day a new story comes out that, oh, a woman claims that Trump molested her 30 years ago in the bathroom of a, of a coffee shop, then they'll say, wait, Trump told me that this is a lie, so I'm not going to believe it. Um, also, I think he may want to increase the uh, or change the terms he uses because he's still calling the media the media. He's still calling the journalists the journalists. He needs to start using terms which paint them as the enemy. And I think one very good term for journalists is enemy combatants. I mean, that's what they are. You know, they have betrayed the USA. They've betrayed the American people. I think we have to start calling them enemy com enemy combatants. Because what we used to, in the manosphere, we used to call journalists typists. You know, she's a typist. She's just typing away. But that's being too nice. That doesn't really describe what the media is doing. So I think starting to use the term enemy, com enemy combatant is the best way forward because that kind of already implies that, hey, the media is not working for you. They're on the other side. You know, they're working for someone else. So I think Trump can start to change the terms that he uses because right now it's the media that is the number one threat to squashing his chances of winning. Um, the, and so I think we're also getting to, to the point where Trump may have to pull a nuclear option. I mean, we have to, we have to assume that we have way more stories coming that this, that if they're pulling the growth stories on this day, which I, I don't even know what date it is, October 12, and we have 25 more days left, we have to assume that the rape stories are coming, that, a pedophile story is coming and these are going to be false of course but these stories are definitely coming i mean i'm thinking they probably have a calendar they have a calendar set up on what day 
which stories come out. So today the calendar said that, okay, we got to get this 30 year old airplane grope story from a grandma and so on. But I think I'm, I'm not scared, but I think that the stories are going to increase in severity as time goes on. So that isn't good. But hey, you know, if you're on the Trump train, you're on the Trump Trump train, which means unless the evidence, unless there is really solid evidence that, hey, this man really hurt someone or I mean, I would need to see a videotape of Trump breaking a law. It has to be way beyond just some woman in tears doing a stupid interview for the New York Times. Uh, so anyway, so what I was going to is the nuclear option is accuse Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. Hold on. Ooh, to accuse Hillary Clinton of murder. Just accuse her outright of killing people. <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's so crazy to say it. But I think that's what we that's what we have to do, because if Trump is a rapist or a fondler, you know, we have to just, I mean, there's already a lot of people online, they did work that Hillary has a body count. And if you read this in the latest, and there's a couple people who re, who died just a few m months ago, one guy, he was about to testify, I think, to the UN, he died uh, lifting weights, but not with a barbell that is long, that is possible to drop that barbell on your neck. He died from a dumbbell. How do you drop a dumbbell on you and get killed? I would like to know that because that's the way that this guy died. And there was also Seth Rich who died in the in Washington, D.C., um, but they didn't take his wallet. So, I mean, and he was doing work which would have exposed what Hillary was doing. But the nuclear option is just to outright use as much evidence as you can, accuse Hillary Clinton of hiring murderers to kill. And I, th I think that will be an option to use after October 28th or so. So that you have to save it. But I mean, I don't think Trump is going to have much of a choice. I think he's going to have to use this because they're going to bring out some more stuff. And I think we already know. I mean, all of us, we have this gut instinct that the media is not done yet. The media is going to pull out I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to pull out a lot of, of tricks that Trump may not have an immediate response to. Because, look, suing the New York Times, that's that's great. It's it's uh, It came out that Trump wants to sue the, the New York Times, but lawsuits take a long time. Lawsuits take a year or longer. So that lawsuit, I mean, maybe he'll win. That's great, but it's not going to help him on, no, on November it, on no, November 8th. So we have to keep that in mind that what is a nuclear option that we can use right now. And I think accusing Hillary, I mean, because accusing her of being of being corrupt doesn't didn't work that that well. The Breitbart corrupt cash, they 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 tried. They really tried to push this, but the problem is people already assume a certain level of corruption in their politicians, so that didn't work. I think the uh, health issue definitely hurt hurt her, but until, unless we get her basically having a really obvious seizure or collapse on camera, I mean, bigger than what we saw happen on 9-11, where she kind of fainted like a rag doll, where she had to be kind of shuffled into the van. I think unless we start getting a lot of those, we would need at least one of those health events every week or else, because the problem is if she has a health event, and two weeks pass, then people think, oh, well, it must have been a one-time thing and she's fine now. So for that health event to really, for the health issue to really stick, we got to, she has to continually collapse again and again. So I don't think that's going to happen. I can only imagine the drugs that they got her on that are really, I mean, she's basically like a robot. You know, they have her hooked up on, she probably has like an IV that's just basically pumping her full of drugs so she doesn't pass out. Okay, so that's basically what, where we are. So our, bit, our two big options is for Trump to talk to women like a caring husband talks to a wife who thinks... She, he cheated on her. So basically he needs to stroke her, you know, hand 
and walk her through it. That's Trump is not doing that. I mean, he's talking to men, which is important. You need the male vote. But I mean, I think the men are probably going to vote for him no matter what pedophile, I mean, excuse me, no matter what uh, <laughs> rape tape comes on. I mean, if he, if it comes out that he did something to a child, yeah, that's probably, that's probably time to pack it up. But uh, short of that, short of some Trump on tape molesting a child, I mean, that's, if there's something that comes out that's short of that, you should not give up, give up hope. You shouldn't be ups, up, upset. Even if Trump, even if there's a tape of Trump saying the N word, I'm sure we can solve that too. I mean, I'm, cause we can look at what uh, Hillary has done. She's called black people, super predators. She has excommunicated the black son of her husband, Bill. So we can probably still save, save that, but really short of Trump, molesting a child, I think everything can be saved and you shouldn't lose hope on that. Now, I hate to talk about, but if Trump doesn't win, where what that means is that no heterosexual man can ever, who's not part of the establishment, can ever win the office of president in the United States, ever. I mean, they have now, they're basically going to call every heterosexual man that they don't like, that is not part of the system, that is not approved, a rapist. I mean, this, you saw it, you saw them do it on me, and you're going to see, and you're seeing what they did on me just a few months ago in February, dueling it on Trump. I mean, that's basically, so what they did, they created a rape culture where now any woman can make an accusation against a man and that man has and that man is assumed guilty so they created the very type of culture that prevents anyone not part of the establishment from succeeding whether he wants to hold a meetup or whether he wants to run for um presidential office so you see the kind of trick that this is super mk ultra stuff man this is mk ultra shit where they program the public really fearful of men who rape and who change the definition of what rape is. I mean, the definition of, of what sex is, is being changed right now through these yes means yes laws that first got started in, in the colleges, but are now going to be rolled out in national law and they hammered it in you hammered it in you this programming this programming that you have to believe the victims and one in four women are being raped and they keep hammering that into you so now they have a guy they don't like and all they have to say is he groped a woman he uh wrote some bad words he he did this he did that so this to me is some kind of m MK Ultra stuff. And I know that's that goes into the realm of conspiracy theory, but just look how if you say the word rape, how people flip the fuck out. I mean, people, it's like rape is worse than m murder. Rape is worse than your country collapsing. Rape is worse than everything. Like, how did they do that? Well, it took them a long time, but they did it. So, I mean, if Trump doesn't win after the demographic changes happen, the only person who can be president of the United States is a gay man, is someone who, I mean, you're going to see a female to male tranny be president of the United States before you see a heterosexual man that is not part of the establishment. I mean, that's where we are going right now. Okay, so then the last part I want to focus on is what can we do now? So what can we do? I mean, we're all the the nonstop bile of these horrible articles, they're just going to keep keep on coming, and people you know are going to wonder, is Trump the man I should vote for? Is he? Did he really do this stuff? But we have to stay the course. Um, we have to first, we have to vote. We uh, have to vote. So, I mean, if you didn't register to vote, you got to get off of your ass and, and do that. I mean, I did it for the first time in God knows how long. So I'm ready to vote. You need to vote, especially if you're in a battleground state, because that's what it's going to come down to. I mean, basically, the whole election is going to come down to four states. I believe they're Ohio, Pennsylvania, and um, two others, which slipped my mind right now. But maybe in the comments, you guys can share that.
Second thing besides voting is to get the truth out. The truth, people, most people, I think, have a capability to see the truth when it hits them right in the face. I mean, a lot of people that nowadays, they seem to be in la-la land where, 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 where whatever the media says is true. But the truth has to get out there. So the best thing you can do is really share it. Share it on the internet is fine, but share it with people that you know. I mean, share it with people in your city. I mean, just be careful about sharing it at work, but you want to share the share the truth with people that you know. If you have a talent for making amazing memes, then do it meme hard. I'm not very good at memes, but a lot of you are, and you can send them to me too, if you want me to share them. And the last thing is get others to vote when the time comes. I mean, it's, it's all good. I mean, everything you see on the news with Trump said this and they think this and, and my opinion on this is this and the, and the polls say this will mean nothing when the time comes to count what the votes are. Unless the votes are cheated in some way, the votes count. This is what we need. Everything that the other side is doing is to prevent you from having confidence in voting for Trump. I swear to God, I feel like I am a, psych a psychologist that's trying to keep the morale of our side up. I mean, then the one way is to show is look what they did to the vote in England. The, 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 the Brexit vote is where they, the polls were showing that, man, Brexit's going to lose. Brexit's going to lose. The Remain vote is high and there's no way Brexit is going to win. Six out of seven polls showed Brexit was not going to win. And guess what happened? Brexit won. And I mean, no one thought they were going to win. People were giving up. And we, I mean, this is basically Brexit times a million. So everything, everyone is trying to get into your mind to lose confidence in Trump, to think he's going to lose so you don't vote, so you don't spread the truth, and so you don't tell other people to vote too. As long as you understand that, you understand that now you kind of basically have to ignore everything. I mean, you have to ignore the, what they bring out. I mean, you, you have to understand there are thousands and thousands of people working in the media trying to take this one man down. Thousands of people, if you include all the support staff. Thousands of people are working to take down this one man. I mean, for that reason alone, even if you didn't know about his policies or anything or his platform, that's a reason to vote for him. But I mean, you have to understand Trump, I don't know if he knows, if he knew before when he announced that he was going to run what he was getting into. I really don't know if he knew that he was going after this huge establishment that freaking hates him. And, uh, you know, I fear for that man's life. But, I mean, we have to get him in. Like, if Trump doesn't get in, all those people that are going after him now will have the free time to go after us. So Trump has taken so much heat that's kept it off of us. And I think that if Trump doesn't win, we're in for a rough time. <laughs> we are in for a rough time because all those journalists are going to be pouring into us. They already know who we are. They already know who the important nodes are that are helping Trump. And man, I've and starting with Alex and Alex Jones. He's going to be the first one. I mean, Hillary named him. I mean, Alex Jones, I know is basically his life is at stake to make sure that Trump wins. Um, yeah, so the name of the game is don't let them run these psyops on you to demoralize you. That's all they're doing. They're just trying to get you to be shaky. So don't let them do that. And don't worry what what CNN says. Don't worry what the New York Times says. You know, a lot of people who already are not going to vote for Trump is coming out to really make it seem like the news matters. Like, oh, this new story that I heard today in the New York hoaxing times, this changed my mind. No, no, they already made up their mind. If all we do is just get people who already support Trump to get out there and vote while continually demoralizing Hillary, while continuing to really, you know, get the WikiLeaks out there, get the health issues out there, we got to get Bill Clinton's son in the next debate. If we just do that, I think we can win. But right now, 
Within the next week or two, we're going to enter the fog of war. And the fog of war is when there's so much bullshit going on that you are no longer able to tell what is true or what is not. And we're not there yet. We're starting to get there. But it's basically going to be a pile of horseshit that is thrown at you from their side to where you are confused of what reality is. I mean, that's what the fog of war is. And that's going to come. But all that matters is that you get your ass out there, you vote, you spread the truth or what you think the truth is, and you get other people to vote too. So I think those are the most important things. And one of the reasons I did this, this Periscope is because a lot of people are down and out. I mean, it's hard. It's hard when the world is against you, when for the man that you believe is going to save this country or at least stop it from declining as much as what the other person does. I mean, they're all against him. They're calling him all these names. And I'm here to show you that, hey, I've been there before, man. They used, they did the same thing to me. In in, in, uh, earlier this year, 1600 articles. Now I know that's smaller than, than, than Trump. I would be honored to be called uh, mini Trump. But And you can check out my book, Free Speech Isn't Free, where I share you what they did to me. It's almost the exact thing. It's like the smaller scale of what they are doing to this man. And for Trump, I mean, when they came after me, I was shaken up. I mean, this was something I've never experienced. I... My family was in danger. but And they're doing it to Trump on a scale that I honestly can't imagine. And if I was Trump right now, I wouldn't be able day after day to go, I don't think, to go on rally after rally when the system, when the system of the most powerful country in the world is trying to take him down. There's no, I don't know. I I mean, that kind of, it says how strong, how strong that man is. And, uh, you know, while I don't think Trump is going to save everything and he's not a, a magician, a sorcerer, I think he can definitely push the pause button, at least on the decline we are facing right now, unless there's a tape that comes out of him molesting a child. I mean, that's basically what my line is. Even if he, even if there's a tape showing him stab someone, if the man he stabbed was bad, you know, maybe I would go vote for him anyway. But I mean, look, okay, and I can see in the comments. That people are like, well, you know, would you really support someone who kills? Well, Hillary already killed. You know, Hillary, as you see with the body count that she has had, she already killed a lot of people. So if Trump kills only one person, I don't know, maybe that's not a bad thing. Okay, so, God, I would hate to get off now when I have the highest live view count, 840 people. But I'm, I'm kind of done. I mean, if there's anything that you want to talk about. Well, I sip on this this beer beverage. Oh, or okay, or maybe I can just stand here and not even not even talk, and people just want to stare at this beard. I mean, look how big it's getting. Look how big it's getting, guys. My God, I don't know if you can really tell. Maybe I can do like a little side view. Okay. Any upcoming projects? Yeah, I'm writing a a book right now. I'm writing a book. It's going to be my last book on game. Oh, and if you're watching, you got to really check out the Newsweek article that they did on me. Google Newsweek Roosh, and you can see it. And the article was pretty good, actually. And, um, oh, well, there's a lot of haters on this, too. This is the first time I'm seeing it. What happens... Okay, here's here's a good one from BioWolf. What happens if the election is stolen from the people? And... All I can say is this. They stole the vote from Ron Ron Paul. The media did a blackout. They changed their Republican rules. So all the people who supported Ron Paul, did they go home and cry? No. They then moved to support the Tea Party. So then the Tea Party was larger than Ron Paul, right? But then the Republican Party, who is the traitor party, they're part of the Uniparty, the Democrats and the Republicans are are one party, then the Republicans co-opted the Tea Party, and they turned the Tea Party from a genuine movement to something that just supports establishmentarian Republicans. So then, did all the people who supported the Tea Party go anywhere? Did they just go home and, 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 and cry? No. 
All those people now, the Ron Paul people and the Tea Party people, they're supporting Trump. Now, if you shut down, shut down Trump, which is bigger than Ron Paul and Tea Party by orders of magnitude, I fear that what you're going to have after that is, is civil war. I mean, I don't know how it's going to probably start in the, in the Midwest, but civil war, there's going to be a point where people aren't just going to support a candidate anymore to fight back. They're going to pick up guns. So, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I think anyone, you have to be, you have to be kind of careful of anyone who's calling for violence. But I mean, where is all this pent up anger going? Even if Trump loses, where are those people going to go? If Trump loses right now, are you going to go home and say, oh, oh, well, and, and just walk it off? No, you're going to be furious. You're going to be freaking furious, especially because of everything that the establishment did to cheat Trump out of it. So I think when you are mad and when you start, it's when you start to feel that you have nothing to lose that's when bad stuff happens. Because people who have nothing to lose, they're not scared of dying, they're not scared of going to jail, they're not scared of losing their job, and not scared of not being able to buy a Starbucks coffee every day. So you have to keep that in mind. But um, the one thing I'll say is this. Usually when a, when a system, when an establishment wants to distract the population, they start a war in somewhere f far away. And they start that war. But what happens when the population is so awoke, so awake, so red, red pill that they're not going to go along with any war that you start somewhere else? Then the war is against you. Then they fight you. If they're not going to start World War III because no one's going to go along with that, the war is against you. And they're going to shut you, they're going to shut you down, whether it's taking away your guns, whether it's really changing laws, you can't uh, execute your free speech. So just keep that in mind. If the population is too awake, the wars in faraway lands are not used to distract the population. It's wars against you. All right, guys, I have to end this because my girl cooked and uh, she is out there. So I have to. So this was a lot longer than I thought. So I'm going to go spend quality time with her. And I hope this video helped. But don't get upset. Don't get demoralized. You have to stay the course. There's only 25 days left. That's it. Just get, I want to see some high energy for 25 days. That's it. That's all. After that, you can take a break for a long time, hopefully. But we just need good energy for 25 days. Stay the, stay the course. Ignore the media bullshit. Get ready to vote, spread, spread the truth out there, and get other people to vote too. So I hope you like this Periscope, and until next time.